the British and French are proceeding uh, at a fairly rapid rate with a, uh, a transport that will fly about Mach 2.2. Uh, they do not seem to have this concern for their uh, the boom and the citizens' reaction to it that we do. This program would involve about six or seven billion dollars worth of uh, aircraft, perhaps two to three hundred of them at 25 to 30 million apiece. Uh, 200 of these airplanes would contribute perhaps 60 billion dollars to the national economy over a 10 or 15 year lifespan. This would create 40 or 50 thousand jobs a year for American engineers and artisans. It would uh, earn us two and a half to three billion dollars worth of export payments. It would advance uh, technology. It would bring the world uh, to the door of Oklahoma City. Uh, for example, if it took, uh, takes you now 12 hours to get from here to Rome, it would probably take uh, three or four in the 70s, if this program goes through. But it can only go through if it makes uh, safety, uh, soundness, and public toleration. Why was Oklahoma City, and how was Oklahoma City chosen in the first place for these tests? This uh, city and community is one of the most air-minded, one of the most pioneering cities of the air age, and it is also headquarters of two great installations, Tinker Air Force Base and uh, the Aeronautical Center of FAA. Uh, the city fathers, so to speak, although I guess not all acknowledge them <laughs> as fathers, uh, were consulted with. And I think some 100 or so of the people in this community who are the most thoughtful and uh, advanced in their thinking indicated that they thought the community would be hospitable to an experiment of this nature. We then came down and uh, uh, as I understand it, Mr. Bain invited a group of uh, news uh, media people, uh, other uh, people such as your uh, uh, mayor and city manager, uh, over to a advance view of this at uh, a local Air Force base. And after that was uh, uh, found both interesting and acceptable, uh, the program was developed and commenced about uh, three weeks ago. Well, the outcome of this test have any bearing on uh, the possibility of Oklahoma City becoming a supersonic transport terminal? Well, I don't think uh, this experiment is designed to see whether this city should be served by supersonic transports. No, sir. I think uh, this experiment is designed in the national and, I might say, international interest of finding out whether there should be supersonic transportation, whether it's a uh, wise thing for this country to spend a billion or so on. Is this, uh, do you consider the possibility of this being any invasion of privacy? Some Oklahoma citizens, Oklahoma City citizens, have protested as being guinea pigs. I understand that point of view. Uh, it, it seems to me that those who uh, will are curious about this are on the one side, and those who are furious about it are, are on the other side. And somewhere between the curious and the furious, we have the average man, and it's his reaction that we're seeking. Now, uh, a hot rider with two straight pipes with no muffler uh, is invading privacy. A, uh, a railroad train, when uh, many of us were children here in the Southwest, was an invasion of privacy. Uh, to some, the television tube is an invasion <laughs> of privacy. And uh, I think it, it, what is one man's uh, interest is another man's annoyance. Uh, some people have asked if the supersonic transport is developed and when it is developed, uh, will we receive the same shock, eight sonic booms per day in Oklahoma City? You see, Oklahoma City is astride the nation's air routes, and it, like many other Midwestern cities, uh, would be in the path of the transcontinental supersonic 
uh, airways. And so even if uh, supersonic transport never took off or landed here, uh, Oklahoma City would be in what you might call uh, the middle of supersonic transportation. So uh, it seems like uh, to us and to many of the city's leaders a, a good pioneering uh, help uh, your government make a decision, a kind of experiment. If the community says no, uh, that we do not want to assist the government in this respect, of course uh, your national government would take that into account. And if it becomes intolerable, uh, it's, that's one of the things we're trying to find out. Uh, if the booms are banned in Oklahoma City, uh, we would like to complete these tests in another location. And I've been advised that at least one or more cities has invited uh, the conduct of these experiments uh, to be continued in that city. Will the development of the supersonic transport continue no matter what the result of this uh, controversy in the city? I don't think anyone could say that, no, sir. I think uh, this test is a, a crucially important one in the, the world's next phase of aeronautical development. Uh, if this city, with its air-mindedness, uh, should say uh, this noise is completely intolerable, uh, then I would think the next phase of airplane development would be very significantly reconsidered.
Captain Charles E. Yeager. Get our feet. It will also give the Air Force valuable knowledge of the resources of new propulsive systems. Captain Yeager gets aboard the XS-1. It can't be a long flight he's going to have in the little aircraft. At full power, the flight can't last more than two and a half minutes. But it's going to be a fast one. crews are ready ever to fly back. A B-29 will take the XS-1 aloft and launch her at an altitude of about 35,000 feet. The XS-1 is not a military aircraft, but a flying research laboratory designed to test the effects of supersonic flight upon airplanes. It is powered by four rocket engines. No airplane ever did what the XS-1 is about to do. The only possible method for timing aircraft at extremely high altitude. There she goes. A big moment in a history-making flight. Now she's approaching the barrier. The speed of sound at 35,000 feet is 660 miles per hour. The really big moment. Through the sound barrier. The first time ever in level flight. And the world's fastest bomber accelerates steadily to Mach 2. Twice the speed of sound for its final 600 mile dash to the target. Creating. Like all sound, this sonic boom results from an invisible pressure wave. Below Mach 1, the speed of sound, they push aside the molecules just ahead. And they, in turn, give warning and push aside the molecules ahead of them. But at the exact speed of sound, these molecules can no longer react quickly enough. The leading edges are among them before they can move aside. And the molecules pile up in a so-called shock wave of energy. At precisely Mach 1, if they were visible, spreading out in all directions, they might resemble a shallow dish attached to the plane. But as the plane's speed increases, the pressure wave sweeps back at an angle, forming a funnel-shaped cone trailing back from the plane. And, of course, a portion of this funnel of pressure reaches the ground. But when pressure of varying intensity and wavelength strikes the ear, we perceive it as sound. In the air superior done to evaluate the feasibility of constructing a supersonic jet transport. Several houses were obtained. Did they bother you at all? Yes. In the way I am. Yes, sir. Did they bother you at all? Quite a bit. Did they damage your home at all? Well, I don't know where the dining home stood. I don't know whether they dining from home or not, but uh, checking it pretty much every morning, about 7 o'clock, and then shortly after, give us a good shake. And everybody made on, I was right in line of it. 
I mean, I don't care one way or the other, okay? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> because they didn't bother me. Well, I guess it's pretty good because of all the difficulties they've had with some people complaining, but I think it would have been nice if we could have gone all the way through with it. Did the rooms bother you at all? No, I liked them. First, now I object to the being a guinea pig in a test that I had nothing to do with. And it is uh, created a problem with this child that I hold in my hand. I have advised him to avoid being present around these things as much as possible. Exactly on my fireplace. There's no question in my mind, even though these, com these people from commerce and industry, com Chamber of Commerce Department is essentially what has represented itself here this morning. And they pack the auditorium with their paid employees. I come here without pay. Their employees are being paid this afternoon. There's no question in my mind, <clears throat> as Mr. Gurley pointed out, <clears throat> 